In this video, I'm gonna be doing some bird photography with the Nikon Z50. What was it like? Well, find out next. It's just come into springtime here in Australia and the birds are out in force. So what I've decided to do is take the Nikon Z50 with my 80 to 400 millimeter lens via the FDZ2 adapter for a test run just to see how it would perform. It's a stunning spring morning and the early sunlight is dancing on all the foliage. The birds are singing and the Death Star is setting gently in the west. Okay, um, that, that's a typo, that should be moon. The moon was setting gently in the west, sorry. <clears throat> Carry on. You know it's springtime here in Australia when all the beautiful native yellow wattle flowers are out in bloom. The bees are gorging themselves on all that delicious nectar. But along with the bees come the birds looking for a tasty sweet meal. These are rainbow bee eaters extremely colorful, very fast in flight, and their food of choice? Yep, you guessed it, bees. I've set the Z50 up using back button focus, autofocus continuous and the frame rate was set to high plus. Now straight away I noticed with the Z50 paired with this lens, I got a 600 millimeter reach on the long end due to the one and a half crop. Now that's a good thing in my book because the closer I can get, the better when it comes to bird photography. There were so many varieties of birds out on this morning. Everything from male and female Australasian fig birds to surprisingly for this area, yellow-tailed black cockatoos. I was enjoying the Z50, being able to swap over between stills and video easily enough. To capture these silver eyes in both stills and video was a real treat. Even this Willy Wagtail got in on the act. He dropped by to say hello, and there was a stage it got so close to me, I could almost reach out and touch it. I was liking the Z50 colors I was getting in the shots, but there was one thing that was perplexing me. I used literally every focus type on this Z50 from single point, dynamic area, wide area small, 
wide area large. Yet even though I was getting the green box over my bird subjects, a good majority of the shots were still soft, even using apertures up to f10 for a greater depth of field. So I had to manually micro adjust the focus by zooming in firstly in the viewfinder on a lot of these shots you're seeing. Now I was thinking there was something wrong with the lens, did it need calibrating, was the back focus out or was the you know, lens having some sort of trouble communicating via the FTZ2 adapter. But I did some static tests back home here in my garden and it was all fine. So I was getting a real mishmash of shots that were perfectly in focus and ones that were out. Now I know a lot of you will be saying, yeah, but you only need one good shot of a bird anyway. But the flip side to that argument is, yeah, but what if the one shot I really wanted of the bird catching its prey in the air or taking flight off a branch was the one that ended up being out of focus? So is this Nikon Z50 good or garbage when it comes to bird photography? Well, for me, the jury is still out on that one. In some aspects, it was very good, but in some, it was meh. But I have to be realistic in my expectations of the Nikon Z50, especially given brand new, it's a sub $1,000 camera in the US and that includes a kit lens. The Z50 is a fantastic little camera, but I think I need to take it out again in a couple of weeks time and try experimenting with some different settings. I'm not throwing in the towel just yet. I'll have a play and I'll see how I go and I'll share that video with you to show you the results. So make sure you subscribe and keep your eyes out for that video. Personally, if you want my two cents worth, I actually think if you were chasing a budget price camera specifically to do bird and wildlife photography, then I think there are some better options out there on the market. Cameras that have both animal and bird IAF as standard, but you have to remember, those cameras aren't infallible. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Never stop creating, and I'll see you next time.